Today, we are going to be talking about pride in our leadership. Have you ever worked for a prideful leader? If you have, you might recognize some of the characteristics that we're going to walk through in just a few minutes. And chances are, if you work for a prideful leader, it wasn't a good experience. Probably frustrating for you, and it maybe even you know made you angry, upset, deflated. So we're going to be talking about um, what it is to watch or be careful of pride seeping into your leadership. My oldest daughter has a t-shirt and it says, I'm not always right, but I'm never wrong. <laughs> now it's a funny t-shirt, but too many leaders actually take that to heart. They literally think that they're never wrong. And you know, it, it's sad that pride is so closely tied to leadership. Unfortunately, it's sad because it's true, right? Power can go to our head really quick. Power can just it give us an inflated sense of self. And so we're going to be looking at today um, about pride and how to watch for pride in our leadership. Because too often we can begin to think that we're bigger and better than we really are. And you know what, hey, you might say, I'm the top salesman this month, I'm knocking it out of the park, and, and we start walking around with our heads up a little bit higher, start strutting around like we own the place. Well, even if you literally own the place, I would still advise against it. We've all seen the cocky, arrogant leader who acts like a hot shot in charge. I mean, has anyone ever actually liked that person? So I want to help you to avoid becoming that person because nobody likes that person. Nobody wants to work for that person. So how do we recognize when pride has maybe crept into our leadership and maybe it hasn't and you, has, and you haven't even noticed? There's a scripture found in the Bible. It's a proverb and it's found in the book of Proverbs, chapter 16, verses 18. And it says this, pride comes before the fall. How true is that? That pride comes before the fall. We see this played out in history over and over and over again. Kings and dictators wanting more power, wanting to expand their kingdoms, expand their reach, expand their military endeavors, and get this inflated sense of self and, and start puffing up their chest only to see their kingdoms fall. So pride truly does come before the fall. So we're going to look at five traits to watch for in your own life and in your own leadership. Number one is blame. Blame. The prideful leader always wants to blame someone else. They, they try to blame someone else for their mistakes, for their shortcomings. They very rarely take responsibility for their own actions and their own mistakes. And I say mistakes because they have no problem taking responsibility for their success. But responsibility for their mistakes and shortcoming, they're not so quick to jump and take. But admitting to mistakes, it's a, it's a big deal. It's a big deal in leadership. You need to be able to own up to the mistakes that you make. But prideful leaders, they have such a hard time owning up to and admitting their mistakes. It might not seem like it, but who wants to work for or even be around someone that cannot admit when they're wrong, right? Maybe you've had a friend, maybe you had a family member, a coworker that whenever you're around them, they just cannot admit that they're wrong. And those people are no fun to be around and, and they're really no fun to work for either. See, because, and here's the thing, is because there's a chance that if you're around them, near them, work for them, that they're going to blame their mistakes on you. No one wants to be someone else's scapegoat, right? Thrown under the bus. I mean, could you imagine working for someone that at any given moment, all of a sudden they can blame you for their mistakes, this is what pride does. It does not allow you to admit your own wrongdoing. And, and you need to watch this, all right? You need to, um, you know, do you find yourself blaming others for your mistakes? 
do you, um, does your boss get upset with you and then you throw someone else under the bus? So one of the things you need to watch for in your leadership is, do you find yourself blaming other people for your mistakes, for your shortcomings, for your failures? And if you do, it's a sign that um, pride is being the creep into your leadership and creep into your life. So you need to watch it because admitting your own mistakes, it's a huge part. It's a part of leadership. It's saying, you know what, hey, you know, to your boss, to your CEO, to your manager, supervisor, whoever it is, hey, sorry, I made the mistake. This is on me. I always watch for people that are passing the buck. People are like, oh, it wasn't me. It's never me. It was so-and-so. Um, it was this person. Um, this didn't work because of this, that, or the other thing. And, and blaming other people. Uh, those people are just, they're not going to get um, promoted. They're not going to move up in their leadership because they haven't learned to take responsibility. See, there's this idea to grow in leadership, to move up even the corporate ladder, that you need to be perfect. But real leaders know there's no such thing. Leaders are not looking for perfect people because they don't exist. Leaders, managers, supervisors, CEOs that are that are looking within their company to promote people, to give people pay raises, right? We all want a pay raise, right? You know, to, to elevate, to, to move to that next level of leadership. They are looking and seeing, you know, hey, who are great leaders? And the ones that are always blaming other people, the, those people that are always passing the buck, throwing someone else under the bus, leaders, real leaders know that we don't want those kinds of people in, in, our, in our organization. We certainly don't want them in some kind of management position because they are not going to take responsibility for their own actions. All right, it's one thing to make a mistake, okay? It's another to try to cover it up, right? How many movies, how many things have we seen, you know, where the cover up was actually grew to be much bigger than the actual mistake? Too many times, um, immature leaders try to cover up their mistakes and they had to just owned up to it, say, hey, I made this decision, I did this thing, I messed up, I made a mistake, I, I fell short, um, you know, I didn't hit the deadline, I didn't hit the sales marks that, you know, benchmarks that I was supposed to hit, um, I'm going to work harder next month, I'm going to work harder to, um, you know, shore up some of these um, shortcomings, um, some of these weaknesses in my life, man, you are going to see um, and, and, and a real leaders will notice that in, in a leader. But the one who passes blame, man, I, I watch out for those. Uh, and so make sure that you can own up to those mistakes, okay? Own up to them. Uh, and, and so <clears throat> let's move on to number two. Number two is chaos. Have you ever been around someone that chaos follows? <laughs> that there always seems to be some kind of drama, some kind of chaos in and around their life. Prideful leaders will often actually create dysfunctional cultures of chaos. Think about that. Immature leaders will create dysfunctional cultures of chaos. You're like, well, why would they do that? Well, prideful leaders like to be the heroes. So sometimes, and, and I've seen this happen, I've watched, I've lived through, I've seen this happen in my own life. I've watched someone else do this, okay? A leader will create some kind of drama, some kind of chaos, and they will literally take a situation and make it worse at first. They will make it worse. They will blow it out of proportion, all right? They will pull more people into the problem pull more people into the chaos, okay? And it's really just an act. It's just, it's actually an act. They're, they're creating drama for the final show. And they're like, what are you talking about? They're creating chaos, creating drama. Then they amazingly come up with a solution to the problem they actually created. It sounds crazy. And you might think, you are nuts. I'm telling you, I've watched people do this. I've watched people create chaos around their life or take a situation and make it 10 times worse 
than it ever needed to be, only so that they could be the ones to come up with the solution. I've watched, like I said, I've watched it. Easy problems turn into chaos overnight. Think about it. Have you ever had someone in your life that takes something small, maybe it's a coworker, um, a boss even, and it takes something small, insignificant, and overnight it just, it just ballooned. And all of a sudden what was involved two or three people now involves six, seven, eight, nine, ten people. All by the leader bringing in and creating more chaos and dysfunction out of this one small problem. And this could go on for days, maybe even weeks, and then all of a sudden. Usually, when it has spread so that all eyes are on the problem, bam, that leader comes up with the solution. Making sure that everyone is watching them and everyone knows who solved the problem. These leaders um, in organizations exhibit an inevitable turn of staff who are routinely denied credit, yet assigned blame. They create chaos, they take the small problems, make it dysfunctional, pull people in so that all eyes are on them, and then they magically come up with a solution. If you're interviewing for a, plot, for a, a job, for a position, with a boss or manager, and, and that place has a high turnover uh, of staff, Tread carefully. Now, there could be a very good explanation, a very good reason, but you need to tread carefully. But if that boss or manager has that high volume of turnover and denies employees credit instead of blame, then run. <laughs> okay? You need to run because you know what? You will be their next victim. I mean, employee, you'll be the next victim, you'll be the next employee that they're going to assign blame to. The, the chaos is going to, and dysfunction is going to begin to come around you, and you don't want to be a part of an organization like that. You do not want to work at a place where you could be blamed, where dysfunction and chaos could be created around you. No one has time for that, <laughs> okay? All right, let's go on. Number three. The third characteristic to watch if it's seeping into your life is deceit. Deceit. So we just talked about how prideful leaders rarely apologize. Okay? So when they realize that they're actually wrong, instead of admitting it, they actually turn to lying. And, and they feel that perfection is the only option. I just talked about this. Real leaders, great leaders, they know that perfection is never attainable. But these immature leaders feel like I have to lie to cover up my shortcomings, to cover, cover up my failures. They have this misguided notion that they can't make a mistake. And if they do, they definitely don't want anyone else to know about it. Because they have created this persona of never being wrong. That's the last thing that you want. That's the last thing you need in your life is to try to live up to this perfection because then, once perfection doesn't happen, because it's not going to, because, right, none of us are perfect, then when you, that persona is, is threatened by a failure, then you're going to be tempted to lie and to cover that up. See, when they realize that they're wrong, they will go to great lengths so that no one ever finds out. They don't want to find out that, hey, this person isn't perfect. They're not what they say. Pride can ruin your leadership, your influence, cost you your job. Because eventually, people are going to find out. Eventually, something's going to slip. Something is going to come out. Because there's no perfect leader. There's no perfect leader, so why put the pressure on you to be perfect? Why put that kind of pressure or that kind of standard in your life? Okay, it's not attainable. So don't put it on because when you do and you put that kind of standard and you put that kind of pressure on your life to be perfect, then when you're not, and it's gonna happen, you're gonna make a mistake, you're gonna fall, you're gonna fail, you're gonna then you're gonna be tempted to allow deceit to come in and begin to have to lie to cover it up, right? So 
when you're consumed with pride, often you don't see it. This is why I'm going through these five characteristics that, that you know, pride can show so that you can begin to identify these if you see them in your life because often these prideful leaders, they don't see it. Um, it's never, and here's the thing, is, is often we will tell ourselves, well, if I'm going to lie to cover up this one little thing, it's just going to be once. Let me tell you, it's never just once. And you know what? Even if it is, you've crossed the line. And, and you don't want to have to cross a line lying to a superior, lying to a manager, a boss, business owner. You don't want to go down that path. You don't want to be the leader who is so full of themselves that they have to lie and deceive people into thinking that they're better than they really are. Because here's what happens. Once you deceive someone and get away with it, becomes that much more tempting to do it again. Oh, I got away with it before. I can get away with it again. But then it also becomes more tempting to deceive in other areas of your life. Not just business, not just work, but home, family, socially, with your friends. So be careful. All right, number four is defensiveness. Defensiveness. Have you ever tried to go against what a prideful leader has said, right? Walls go up, the gloves come off, and you would think that you're in the ring with Mike Tyson. And it's just no holds bar. And, and, and you're like, man, what just happened? I just challenged one thing that they said, and they get so defensive. And you would think that you're abducting their child or something, and you're like, whoa, I got, all I did was question one little thing that you said. Now, I will have to admit there are times, there have been times in my life where I've gotten defensive of some things. And, and you know what? And, and I recognized that, you know, it was pride kind of seeping into, creeping into my life. And prideful leaders, they're almost always defensive. They just think that they're always right. So what happens in these type of leaders is they cannot take criticism very well. Okay, so mostly because of their lack of self-confidence. And so the, these leaders that um, are defensive, they, they can't take that, you know, any kind of criticism, even if it's constructive criticism. They, they can't take it because they don't have the confidence to take it. And that's really what it comes down to is, is leaders, immature leaders, a lot of times lack self-confidence. And I can understand, I've been there. And, and, and you think that your every idea and you think that everything that you present needs to be, you know, taken and run with. And But these leaders that are really defensive, it's, it's more oftentimes than not because pride has crept into their leadership. And, and they just think everything they do is right. Everything they do is great. Everything that they do should be just, you know, um, worshipped almost. And any time you threaten that. Anytime you say, hey, you know, actually, uh, this might not be the best way to do it. I think we should actually pivot here and actually go this way instead of what this other, this lead prideful leader is saying. And I mean, it can be small, it can be big, whatever it is, however you challenge them, they do not like it and they lose their cool. They get defensive. They start, you know, fighting. Um, like I said, no holds bar over their idea. They just, Hang on and cannot let go. And it's over everything, big or small. And, um, you know, and then often what they will do is they will begin to tear down someone else. Whoever challenged them, whoever, you know, brought any kind of constructive criticism, they will begin to um, tear down that person. And so you really need to be careful and watch. Uh, you need to watch this. If you see this, you getting defensive in all of your ideas and, and all of your, you know, um, you know, any kind of thing that you're working on, your projects or whatever it is, and, and someone challenges you, brings constructive criticism, and, and man, walls go up, and you just can't hear anybody else or what anybody else is doing or any other thought or input. You need to watch yourself because it's a sign that pride is creeping into your leadership. And we don't want to have pride in our leadership. Number five is 
foolishness. All right, foolishness. In the in the end, pr prideful leaders lack wisdom. Okay, that proverb that we started with, that pride comes before the fall in um, the book of Proverbs in the Bible, 16 verses 18, was written by King Solomon. And King Solomon is known as the wisest man to live. Prideful leaders do not have the ability to be wise. They're foolish. To be wise, you need to listen to wise counsel. And prideful leaders do not and cannot listen to wise counsel. They might listen to counsel, but it's probably, you know, one of their crazy friends that they're listening to. There's so many, you know, scriptures and stories in the Bible where, you know, people, leaders put their friends around, only their friends around them and, and just did not get good counsel and ignored the wise counsel. That's what foolish leaders do. They, they, they listen to what's easy, what's popular, but good, great leaders. They listen to wise counsel. Prideful leaders, they make poor decisions because their falsely perceived self-sufficiency keeps them from following wise counsel. They think they're right, so why listen to anyone else? And essentially, they become fools. There's another proverb found in the Bible, in the, in the book of Proverbs, chapter 12, verse 15. It says this, The way of fools seems right to them. But the wise listen to advice. It's good that the way of the fool seems right to them. You need to listen to wise counsel. Put people around you, have people in your life that are wise, that are smart, that are beyond their years, that you can listen to. You talk to the greatest leaders in our nation. You read their books, you listen to their podcasts, and guess what? You will hear the same thing over and over and over and over again. Great leaders are great listeners. You hear it time and time again. They surround themselves with wise people and they listen to them, all right? They surround themselves with people that understand their industry, that understand leadership, and they listen to them. Because eventually, your character ultimately comes out. But you need to listen to those wise people that you put around you, okay? Because you can only beh hide behind the persona for so long. Eventually, who you are is going to come out. It may take months, maybe even years, but it will come out. Who you are is going to come out. And it is so important to surround yourself with wise people with good counsel, with people who understand you, understand the world, understand leadership, but then you have to listen to those people that, that are in your life, okay? You have to listen to that wise counsel because remember, that proverb says, the way the fool seems right to them. That's what I'm saying is a fool just thinks they're always right. That's what it's saying. How many times have you seen that played out where a person just thinks they're always right, always making the right decision, and they end up being the fool, but the wise. Listen to advice. Get counsel around you. Get people around you and listen to their advice. Pride in leadership may secure short-term success, but it always guarantees long-term failure. Scott Brown said that. I'm going to say that again. Pride in leadership may secure short-term success, but it always guarantees long-term failure. We want to be humble leaders. Humble leaders are kind, they're approachable, they're discerning. Humility is not a weakness. Only immature leaders think that humility is a weakness. Humility is actually a strength. So watch out for these five characteristics. Okay, let's go over them again. Blame. You don't want to be the kind of leader that blames everyone around you. Chaos. Don't create chaos so that you can be the hero and come up with the answer. Deceit. Don't deceive others. Don't, don't lie to your boss to cover up your mistake. Defensiveness. Don't get defensive when someone challenges your ideas. And don't be a fool. 
put wise people around you and stay humble in your leadership.